Hello everyone, welcome to the video about Department of Bioscience Technology in the College of the Science at Zhongyuan Christian University, CYCU, in which located in Taoyuan City in the northern part of the Taiwan. I am Yining Chen, an associate professor at the Department of Bioscience Technology and also the director of Office of the Globalization Enhancement in College of the Science. In this video, I will introduce Department of Bioscience Technology BST in six parts, including education aims and course map, building facilities, faculty research direction, and career paths after graduation. We also provide laboratory tours and experiment demo and the experience sharing from our graduates. BSD was established in 2002. At that time, we only have undergraduate program. From 2007, we added master program in our department. We also have biotechnology program in the international program, including master and PhD program in College of the Science. Our undergraduate program have two education ends, biomedicine te technology and health food technology. And our graduate programs have four major research areas, including health food technology, bioinformatics, stem cells, and expression systems. Total 128 credits are required for um, graduation from undergraduate program and you will get a bachelor degree of the science. Both basic and core post-training core courses are designed for both edu educational ends, biomedicine technology and health food technology, including chemistry, calculus, physics, and also the lecture and laboratory for general biology, biochemistry, human physiology, microbiology, and molecular biology and cell biology. Different advanced selected courses are designed for biomedical technology and health food technology. The most important part is that we have three different internship programs, including cooperate internship program in company for semester, biotechnology internship program in, com in company or research institute for summer, and biotechnology research program in laboratory for research project. We also encourage our students to learn about operation and management skills for the future career in biomedical technology industry. Total 30 credits are required for master degree in BST. The core courses include seminars, thesis, cell physiology, advanced cytology, cell biochemistry, and cell cellular molecular biology. And we also have many interesting selected courses for master program. BSD has its own buildings in addition to third and fourth floors for the Department of Environmental Engineering. We have our office, classroom, and meeting rooms on the first floor, and we have teaching lab for biology, microbiology, biochemistry, physiology, and the computer lab for bioinformatics on the second floor. We have one outstanding animal research center on the eighth floor, including rooms for quarantine, surgery operation, individual rooms for rats and mice, aquarium for zebra fish and individual ventilation cage, IVC systems. From fifth to seventh floors, we have offices and laboratories for our faculties. 
BSD has 11 full-time faculties, including six full professors, four associate professor, and one assistant professor. Professor Zhong Yuan Wu is the dean of the College of the Science. His research topics is to develop polycytromic baculovirus expression factors, establish antiviral drug screen systems, study neurodegenerative disease mechanism, and to develop vaccine production platforms. Professor Ting Yu Jin is the chair of the Department of Bioscience Technology. Her studies is to study the differentiation of neuron stem cells, healthy food for improving neurodegeneration, and study the effect of herbal extracts on liver regeneration and the biomaterials for improving nerve regeneration. The research topics of the professor Wen Xiong Zhang are biomedical material function and safety assay, health food safety assay, and the application of fluorescence nano material. He also studied the molecular mechanism of apoptosis and em embryonic development. Professor Zhong Yong Chen study the epigenomics, single nucleotide polyformism, bioinformatics, and the narrow material for gene detection. Professor Yi Ji Xu focus on the preventive diagnosis treatment on oral cancers, including target targeted liposome delivery of gene or drug, photodynamic diagnosis and therapy, and also the proteomic, metabolomic, and genomic profiling. Professor Chong De Xiao established a credit toxicology and pharmacology service platform by using zebrafish models, including design simple and cost effective devices for physiology and behavior studies in zebrafish, novel zebrafish skin cancer model, novel zebra fish model for human obesity and the genome editing tools developed in zebra fish. Associate Professor Sir Shu Rong Li is the expert of the genetic modification, knockout mice and embryonic stem cells. She has created mouse models for human disease for mechanism studies and treatment evaluation. He ha she has established mouse models with osteoporosis or intrauterine growth restriction for potential health food or drug screening. My lab focuses on the diagnosis method to detect pathogen and vaccine against the infection pathogen. We also study host pathogen interaction. My research topics focus on backbone pathogen research, including the detection of virus and antibodies, and also we study the mechanism of cross-species transmission. Associate Professor Ming Wei Zhao study to improve human health and eliminate the illness occurred especially in newborn and children. He want to understand the impact of PN 2.5 particle and its potential prevention. He established tosiomic EDC-based microRNA screening platform for quantification of mutagenic and carcinogenic property. He also developed neural injury and regeneration model to study compromised neural acts against engine or dementia. 
by using in vitro cell culture system, in vitro primary cell system, and in vivo animal models. The research topics of a social professor Zhen Yuan Su are functional foods and traditional Chinese medicines herb. He studies the effects of the liver protection and cancer chem chemo prevention and epigenomics of functional foods and traditional Chinese medicine. Finally, assistant professor Liang Ying Wu is the expert of healthy food. She focused on the development of functional food and Chinese traditional medicine, which are focused on metabolic syndrome to improve blood glucose and lip lipid levels on the problem of obesity and infertility. And the final part, we are talk about the career path of graduation from BST. The career development is diversified after graduation from BST. If you want to pursue higher level of the education, BST provides four plus one program, which is four years of undergraduate program and one year master program. If you want to start a career, the graduates of the PSD can become research assistant, administration staff, or primary school teachers in the research area or in research institutes. They also can become bioinformatics research and develop engineering, product R&D engineer, uh, engineer quality control specialist, quality assurance specialist, market executive, and pharmaceutical sales representative in biotechnology industry. In addition to that, we also have the graduate become in-house patent engineer, computer engineer, semiconductor engineer, and program engineer in interdisciplinary industry. The salary range are from 1,000 to 2,500 USD dollar, even more per year. We want to welcome you to join our wonderful family at the CYCU BST. After this presentation, we will show you videos of laboratory tools and experimental demo, and also experience sharing from our graduates. Please stay tuned. Okay, so my name is Yinin Chen, and uh, I am an uh, associate professor at the Department of Bioscience at the CYCU. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we are at the door of our lab, and uh, our lab is uh, focused on uh, microbiology and immunology. So there are lots of information on the door, including we are working with the toxic chemicals, so be careful. And then we also have the uh, uh, mark, uh, information about we are working with virus and it belongs to the P2 lab, which is the BSL2. Why is we are working with the uh, P2 lab? It's because we are working with the viruses. Okay. So in our lab, we are working with the coronavirus. Uh, right now, people are familiar with the coronavirus because uh, it caused the COVID-19. And uh, in our lab, we actually start to study coronavirus since 2012. And then we working with the uh, uh, animal coronavirus, including the uh, coronavirus in the bats, in the pigs, and in the chicken, and in the cats. 
So uh, at that time, we main purpose is to understand why the coronavirus will infect different animal and uh, what is the mechanism that coronavirus can infect different animal species. Okay, so uh, outside of our lab, we also show some uh, result of our study. So first we have the, uh, this poster about uh, we detect background virus in the bat population in Taiwan. So in uh, Taiwan, we have the 38 different bat species. And as you can see, some bats living in the tree, some bat living in the cat. So we will use the net to capture the bats and then we will take the uh, uh, fecal sample or the blood sample to do the test. So at the, at the beginning, we use the PCR. So we uh, use the primer and then use the polymerase chain reaction to amplify the virus gene. So this is the result of the electrophoresis. So as you can see, there is a white band. So that white band means that there is a virus inside the uh, bat samples. Okay. So after we got a band, we will send to the company to get a uh, DNA sequence. So this is the sequence. So we will analyze the se sequence and then get a file genetic tree. So based on this tree, we will know what type of the coronavirus we have in the bat population in Taiwan. So we have the uh, uh, Scotovitus bat coronavirus 1312, uh, and then we have the uh, Mineoperosis bat coronavirus 1, and we also have the uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome related coronavirus. So this one will um, worry us because uh, they are close to the coronavirus causing COVID-19. However, they still have 10% difference uh, between bad coronavirus and uh, human COVID-19 viruses. Okay, so this is the first one we are doing. And then we also doing some uh, uh, cell uh, research to understand uh, uh, whether this bat coronavirus can use uh, different uh, cells from different animal species. So we want to know the whole specificity uh, uh, of the bat coronavirus. And then we also test the antibody in the bats and the antibody in the human using the protein we express in the lab and then using the Western uh, blotting assay and the ELISA assay, okay? So, all right, so we will uh, enter uh, my lab. So when we enter the lab, the first big lab we saw is the area we're doing uh, the one uh, without the virus. So there's the risk, there's no risk to expose the virus. So in this area, we were doing some uh, simple test that we can uh, use the uh, water bath to uh, heat the sample. And then we can uh, 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 doing uh, the simple test here. So I think that the most important part in this step is here because we will have the PCR machine. Uh, we will do the PCR to amplify the virus gene to see whether there is a virus in the sample or not. And then we have the qPCR machine. This uh, real-time PCR machine will help us to do the uh, quantitative, quantitation uh, to know how many virus inside the uh, sample. Okay, so we have the centrifuge, uh, many kit, and then PCR station, and also there's an area to run the RNA sample. Besides that, we actually have the several uh, work station. This is the M6 N8 uh, automotive uh, machine that will help us to extract the nucleic acid from the uh, sample. Okay, so that is the um, uh, general lab uh, working with the experiment without the viruses.
okay so we have the uh this uh, uh lamina flow that we will do uh, uh experiment without the contamination okay so this is the part of the general lab so next we will talk about the p2 lab so uh, we put the cells into the incubator to uh, culture and uh, we want to see uh, what condition of the cell. So first we will take out the cells and then we will take the cell to the machine to use this machine to look at the cell. Okay, so as you can see, this machine actually is the microscope. So you can see the cell and uh, can see the morphology of the cell and uh, to see whether the cell attached to the surface of the dress. So the picture shows us they are very healthy and uh, ready for uh, the next experiment. Okay. Okay. So now we will try to um, uh, passage the cell and uh, add some cell culture media. So as you can see, we need to uh, prepare the cell in the uh, biosafety component, and uh, this is the one that have the uh, special uh, equipment to make sure everything inside uh, will not come out to uh, infect uh, people uh, outside. Okay, so first we will use the UV light to stir out the surface of the bench and uh, everything we will use. So we have the pipette and marker and also have the uh, uh, Bunsen lamp and then also have the, uh, the container to, uh, to have the waste liquid. All right, now we will take the cells So as you can see, we use the alcohol to sterile everything. And then now we will try to put the media into the flask. Uh, they actually have the cell inside the flask. Okay. So first we sterile everything and now we use the pipette to uh, put the media into the flask. So this step is just put the PBS into the cell to wash a little bit. So we inverse the press a couple times. take out the PBS. So we 
will put a PDS into the waste container. And next, and now we can put the fresh media into the flask. we will measure the media cover all the surface all right so this is the uh, way that we're doing to the put the fresh media into the cells okay so when we open the incubator we use the alcohol to stir out the surface and by doing this we will minimize the con uh, the risk of the contamination Okay, after that, close the incubator, and that's it. Okay, hi. Uh, so can you uh, uh, introduce yourself and then um, uh, talk a little bit about the reason you came to Taiwan? Oh, uh, hello. Uh, my name is Inda. I'm from Indonesia. I've been in Taiwan for around three and a half years. I spent uh, my master degree here for two years from 2019 to 2021 and then I decided to pursue my PhD study also here in Taiwan. So why I came to Taiwan is a, actually a quite long story. So uh, I, I believe some of us has the quarter life crisis where you are around 25, you start uh, doing your job and then you're not sure if this one is perfect for you or you want to pursue another uh, another job or probably take a graduate study at that time I was like okay screw this job I want to take my graduate study I want to pursue a master degree and then there's a lot of choice I mean I can go anywhere uh, Europe US a, another country in Asia Australia there's a lot of options and I know I want to move outside Southeast Asia because I want to experience another culture mm -hmm. like totally different from my country and then I also want to learn new language mm -hmm. basically I want to also challenge myself not mm -hmm. only for the master degree but also for self-development mm -hmm. I want to learn a lot mm -hmm. so at that time I meet with one of my friends that already here in CYCU doing his master. Mm -hmm. And then he's, he said, oh, why don't you just try coming here? Because people here are very nice. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, uh, Taiwan sounds nice. And then it's also a very totally different language from English and Indonesian. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, fine. So I just start Googling about Taiwan, about CYCU, and then everything seems in place. like. Uh, I've come to know that CSU is the first uh, rank uni uh, private university mm -hmm. that feel oh okay it sounds interesting mm -hmm. and then the second part is I want to know if there is any professor doing experiment that interests me mm -hmm. and I've always interested doing uh, experiment in virus so mm -hmm. I want to do something with virus and then when I open the website I scroll about several professor and then I find oh there's several professor doing fires mm. in the university so I was like okay then I'll try to email the professor and actually the professor replied me quite quick mm -hmm. I think it's only one or two days and then the, he replied me and then say oh you can come and join my my lab I was like oh okay <laughs> is it this this uh nice I mean the professor is really nice and is it this easy so I just apply and then they accepted me, mm -hmm. give me scholarship, and I come here. Wow. <laughs> so that's basically, cool. that's, that's the whole story why I come to Taiwan. And then after the first semester, I was like, oh, Taiwanese is really, really genuinely 
nice people. Mm -hmm. They're really welcoming towards foreigners. I mean, every time I have problem, I just mm -hmm. need to politely ask help for others and they will go out of their way and help me solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Especially because the first six months, I cannot really speak Chinese. So mm -hmm. it's a really hard time. But people here are, will really, really help you. So don't worry. Wow, so. that's nice. That's good. <laughs> Okay, so I think that you can hear and uh, you pursue your master degree. And uh, uh, what do you think about your life in a master uh, study? Uh, for the first six months, uh, I just familiarized myself in the lab, the technique, and then really understand uh, the aim of the study. I mean why we do this study, mm -hmm. what is the importance. Mm -hmm. I think that's the uh, the most important thing before I start doing the studies. Mm -hmm. And then after I grasped all the like the basic techniques in the lab and then why we do this, how what is the procedure, it become more easy. Mm -hmm. It's just just go with the flow and then suddenly you graduate master because wow. master is only two years so mm. it's basically a ghost in a blink it's mm. just like oh suddenly you already graduate so how about a life outside of the lab outside the lab uh i can tell you guys that taiwan is really beautiful there's a lot of mountains you can go you can refresh on the weekends and because taiwan is actually quite small compared mm. to my country yes so when you travel from one area to another area, it's very quick. Mm -hmm. Just take the train. Uh, we are in the Zhongli. CYC is in Zhongli, which is a industrial area. Mm -hmm. And then if you are, if you want to go to the mountain, you just take one hour ride of this train, and then you can totally change the scenery. Mm -hmm. And then it's really refresh you, and then prepare you for the next week experiment. That's great. Okay, so you are talking about the experience. So can you tell us a little bit about your research topic? Uh, so my research topic, uh, I've told you before that uh, I'm really interested interesting in doing research about fire. Mm -hmm. So uh, when I come here, my professor uh, told me that I will that I will work with Nipa fires. This is also an interesting story because Nipah virus is originating from Malaysia. So at first he gave me this virus because he thought I was from Malaysia. Ah. Because Indonesia and Malaysia is very near. <laughs> so that's why, oh, oh, you are, I think you are from Malaysia. So I give you this virus. I was like, no, I'm Indonesian. And then he said, oh, it's okay. Just, just do it. I was like, oh, okay. So uh, basically we are trying to uh, develop a platforms that can screen com that can screen a compound against this virus against this Nipah virus so uh, Nipah virus basically is not a very popular virus uh, it's a very hmm, there's not a lot of outbreak of Nipah virus but the Nipah virus is very uh, deadly the mortality rate is actually up to 70% so we don't want any outbreak of Nipah virus so I prepared several slides for to uh, explain my experiment uh, easily. So the title is the development of fusion-based assay utilizing baclofirus expression factor system for drug screening platforms against Nipah virus. So our lab is focusing in baclofirus expression system. So the Nipah virus protein will be expressed by the baclofirus because Nipah virus is very dangerous. We cannot handle Nipah virus in normal lab. It needs DSL-4. So we just take the protein, put in baclofirus, so the baclofirus will help us express the protein. And then if we see here, Nipah virus, uh, the natural host of the Nipah is the fruit bats, and then it can uh, travel from the blood, the urine or the saliva, and it can contaminate the pig. Because the pig is quite, uh, it's live in close proximity to human, it's easily spread from the pig to the human. And then human can spread the virus to another human.
Okay. So, uh, I try to uh, picture the nipa virus like this. It, this is a virus, and then on the surface of the virus, they have two membrane protein, the F and the G protein. Uh, normally, when the virus wants to enter the host, the G protein will bind to the cellular receptor, and then this binding will trigger the uh, will trigger the conformational change in Nipah virus F. Mm -hmm. After that, the Nipah virus F will trigger the fusion between the viral membrane with the cell membrane, and then it will uh, allow the mat viral material genetic to enter the cell. So, after the nipo virus is inside, it will also express the protein, right? The mm -hmm. F and the G, the G. And then this expressed protein will travel to the uh, membrane of the cell, and then it can interact with the cell receptor in the neighboring cell. Basically, the same process will be triggered, the membrane fusion, but this time it's between this cell, this infected cell, with the neighbor healthy cell. Finally, we can see this phenomenon. We call it syncytium. Basically, it's a multinucleated cell where a cell has one membrane, but two nucleus. So, the rationale of our <coughs> experiment is we construct a baclofirus that can infect insect cells, the baclofirus carry the gene for Nipah virus F and Nipah virus B, G as well as the f b 2 So the infected insect cells will express all the necessary pro protein and then it will trigger the syncytium formation. And then if uh, in this stage we also supply the drugs that can inhibit this membrane fusion, mm. finally we can see two separate cells and not the multinucleated cells. So basically this, this uh, multinucleated cells will be the parameter to determine the efficacy of the compound. Mm. So finally, after several months, no years, it's, we finally can see uh, some compound that has uh, anti-fusion activity against the Nipah virus. Of course, first, we still t need to def uh, generate the baclofirus, infect the insect cells. And then, this is the hardest part, mm -hmm. uh, where we need to uh, find a balanced uh, culture condition that can trigger the syncytium formation. Mm -hmm. So natur because naturally, Nipah virus do not infect insect cells. Yes. So uh, we have to tweak the pH and then edit, edit some compound to trigger the fusion in insect cells. So after we get that condition, we can edit the different compound. So after uh, we test several compounds, we find the suramine is the best compound that can inhibit uh, the nipah induced fusion in, in insect cells. So if we compare to the control, when there's no treatment, we can see around 25 uh, syncytium cell in one few. Mm -hmm. And then when we treat with suramin, it's done less than 10 uh, syncytium per few. So okay. basically, that's all my master oh. experiment. Wow, what a quite interesting study. Wow, so he actually had a, a very good uh, application potentials, right? If we, ha we have this uh, platform, we can screen the uh, drugs. And uh, if we, in the future, if it really happened, we have the drug ready. Can, I hope not. <laughs> I hope we not, hope not. Yes. But uh, the virus still uh, exists in yes. the uh, wild animal population, so there's still some risk. Yes. But we, we we should uh, prepare ourselves. Yes. Yeah, that's quite an uh, interesting work. So okay. how about we go to lab okay. and then you can show, show me around. Okay. Okay, okay so now uh, I'm going to take out the sample from the PCR. 
ไม่ใช่So can you tell us uh, what uh, kind of a sample uh, you put in the machine and what kind of machine and what is the purpose of this experiment? Uh, so basically, because uh, we are trying to do a new experiment, uh, this one is the colony PCR. So uh, after transformation to a uh, compound cell, uh, we Play the compound cell in flip, and then over after overnight, we can see uh, several clones. And then uh, we basically just take that clone, put in a PCR mixture, and then do the PCR to amplify the insert. And then if uh, after PCR, we need to run the electrophoresis gel and then see which clone has uh, successfully. Uh, inserted with the fragment that we want. Mm -hmm. So basically, you are doing some new contract. Yes. Uh, so that means that you put the uh, your interested gene into the plasma yes. and then try to uh, express the protein. Yes. yes. Oh, as a thank you very much. Okay. Hello, my name is Gilbert, and I'm from Indonesia. I finished my master and PhD degrees in the Bioscience Technology Department of Chungyang Christian University in 2021. And as far as I know, Chungyang Christian University is one of the best private universities in Taiwan. And its Bioscience Technology Department is one of the oldest biotechnology departments in Taiwan. Besides its reputations, here are the reasons why I study at CYCU. First, CYCU offers a good scholarships to international students which fully cover the tuition and incidental fee. Moreover, if you are a PhD student, CYCU also provides student dormitories for free that you can use as a place to live during your study period. In addition, regarding the financial assistance, most of the professors in the laboratory you work in will also give extra stipends that is very helpful in affording uh, the living cost in Taiwan. If it's not enough, there are many other scholarships that you can obtain if your academics and research performance are relatively good. Some of these scholarships offer a good amount of money that even can reach up to 2,000 USD per year. Second, CYCU is located in Chongli district, which is a strategic place to live. 
It is close to the international airport and also close to Taipei, which is the capital city of Taiwan. Chongli is not a small city nor a big city, therefore it makes the living cost in Chongli is relatively low compared to Taipei and we still can enjoy any big event in Taiwan. Uh, regarding the classes, you don't need to worry if you do not have a good Chinese language skills since all of the classes teacher will try their best to explain the course in English. However, if you have something that you don't understand yet during the class, all of the teachers are very welcome to discuss with you outside the class. In terms of social life, CYCU has many international students that are spread in most of the departments. Therefore, you can socialize with other international students from other countries to learn about their cultures. However, uh, if you need some time off from your research life, the International Students Associations of CYCU often organize some trips around Taiwan and other activities that can introduce you to the Taiwan culture. Uh, because of its reputations, finding a job after graduating from Biosense Technology Department is not that really difficult. Based on my experiment, if your academic and research performances are good enough your, during your study at CYCU, many biotechnology research institutes in Taiwan, such as uh, Academia Sinica and also National Health Research Institute, will welcome you to work here, as many of my friends do. In addition, you can also apply for a postdoctoral positions that offer in many laboratories as another option after graduation. During my study at CYCU, I did my research under Professor Xiao's guidance. And during that time, I learned various techniques such as uh, performing genetic modifications and also assessing cardiotoxicity in zebrafish and also assessing behaviors of zebrafish by developing several new techniques to assess the fish behaviors which later became the main topic of my thesis and dissertation. Uh, later, by using this methodology, I analyzed the toxicity of various chemicals in fish behaviors, and after that, I used a phenomic approach to evaluate the severity and also the relationship between each compound. These research have been published as uh, research articles in various journals. 